teaching here for a while and love it. It is um, a joy to find a job that really truly makes you happy. And I did find that and I'm, and I'm loving it. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about redefining success. When Emil told me that was the theme and wanted me to talk about music, I thought, well, <laughs> then I got to say, I think that our definitions sometimes about success are pretty inaccurate. Um, they maybe need some tweaking because sometimes they can even be damaging. And not to bring us down here, but some definitions of success or some measuring of success, they can damage you and they can damage your dreams and they can damage your attempt to uh, have those dreams. I just want to make sure you understand it's not all down though because I'm here to say that you're, you're never too old, <laughs> I'm not that old, but I'm kind of old, never too old to realize those dreams. And you're never needing to worry about being 17 and having a ton of pressure and having to figure out, do, there's all these things I have to achieve, right, to be successful and all these things I have to accomplish. You know, as other speakers have said today, you're not on somebody else's timetable of success. You're on your own. You define what success means to you. And it took a while for me to learn that, to be honest with you, because here's my short little story. Um, you know, I, I took this path in teaching, which I've been so happy to do, and but I grew up really loving music and being a part of choirs and doing the things like that that you do. But I also wanted to perform on my own. A long time ago, that was a dream for me. Maybe even someday write my own songs. And here's what happens. <laughs> Pretty quickly, it's quieted uh, by the measurers of success. Be they well-meaning parents or family or sometimes even friends, the discouraging words and maybe even worse, sometimes the stunning silence uh, that, that you might be met with when you're pursuing a dream. And it, it, if you're strong, it may not shut you down, but if you're not, I wasn't, it can shut down your dream. It can start to build a wall that you didn't even know you were building or letting them build. Um, that can happen. And that can also become then, and it did for me, your default. Your default is your belief that they have established that you're good, but you're not good enough. Don't draw attention to yourself. Who do you think you are? 2015, <laughs> it took a while. 2015, uh, we mentioned Coffee House here at Minnetonka and a student involved with Coffee House was also doing some gigs in, in town here and she offered me to, a chance to sit in. I was like, Okay, yeah, and, and, and for the first time in a long, long time, I, I started to let my yes be louder than my no to things, to challenges. We had a ball, and I tell you, man, I was hooked. It was a little tiny, it wasn't a big crowd or anything, but it was a little tiny, you know, um, group of people who were super encouraging, and, and it, was, it was like something that had been dying inside of me to be alive again, came alive that moment. And so we scoot ahead to 2016 and I started taking some voice lessons and some guitar lessons and, 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 and all the while those measurers, voices in the background saying, no one's ever going to let you play. You know that, right? <laughs> so, you know, do it. It's fun. Well, doors started to open. And then the next hurdle, my voice teacher says, I think you need to stop singing covers and start writing your own songs. I think you have something to say. And I said, absolutely not. No way. <laughs> because it just brought up all those images of all those attempts and fails and, right? And the, and the measurer voices again. So I had to take some big steps. I'm a good student. I didn't step away from the assignment. I did the song. It actually turned out to be pretty good. And it, and it unlocked something, man, that, all these songs started to flow after that, and more and more gigs. And after seven sold out shows in a row, and a lot of, of songs, and putting together a little band, and having just the time of my life. Last year, you know, we, we released, I released A Dream, um, 
gave birth to a dream. Uh, my first EP, I hope it's my first, my first EP, we've been down this road before and we had a great release party and just a time of our lives and with no idea, of course, what was coming around the corner in 2020 where a lot of those next opportunities are all going to get shut down and set aside. It's not my livelihood and I'm thankful for that. So I thought, well, I guess that's it. I achieved, but the music didn't stop. The songs didn't stop. It just, they just kept coming and coming and coming. So like a lot of artists, I wrote songs and started to record them in GarageBand and wrote parts for other band members who aren't there and background singers who aren't there, but I see them and I see them. They're happening, they're happening. I don't know how soon, maybe a year. We don't know, right? But I see them happening because uh, being a, a teacher, and I, I know that after a plague, <laughs> there's usually a renaissance. And we don't know exactly what that's gonna look like for so many people in, in entertainment uh, industries and food service and so many other things, but there's going to be a renaissance. And I'd like to be a part of that. And you can be a part of that. You can be an encourager to someone else's dream instead of a, a silencer to someone's dream. And I, I just want to reiterate here before singing you a little song that it, you're never too old <laughs> to realize a dream. If it's what you want, you have to take those first steps and surround yourself with those encouragers and those walls start coming down and even healing starts to happen is pretty tremendous experience. And again, you're not needing to worry if you're 16, 17, 18, and concerned about what's this future gonna hold? And, and what about these dreams I have? Well, they're not gonna make me money. They're not gonna, like, what are you ever gonna do with that? No, you don't have to worry about that. There'll be a place for your dream if you want it. There will. And you don't have to have it all happen by some prescribed timetable. Ah. Silence the measurers, go boldly forward, chase your dream, because you're probably gonna make something beautiful that you can put out into this world. Like we've seen in a lot of the other folks that have talked today and in the ones that are to come. Take your dream, take your talent, take your gift, hang on to it, pursue it. All right, so a couple years ago, I was out riding around on my scooter downtown Minneapolis, and I came by this really old mill. It's like 100 and something years old. It's abandoned, but people go down there and they climb it, you know? I think that's actually illegal, but <laughs> they do anyway, these adventurers <laughs> who go indoor climbing, it's crazy. And it's broken and windows are busted and there's glass everywhere. It's the Fruin Mill, I think, if I've said that correctly. And there's graffiti all over the walls in that day. The graffiti that I saw said, will you make it, question mark, which is a good thing to ponder when you're driving around on a scooter um, through a busy downtown uh, in a city. And it was my birthday on top of it all. I happened to be in, I don't know, man, that, that just, it became a song to me. And it isn't will you make it for me now, it's you will make it. And that's my message for you uh, as well. So, here's that song. I came across a crumbling wall, a splash of pink graffiti scrawl. The words a simple question Will you make it? Will you make it? The question asked of boarded windows and broken glass My curiosity well, just couldn't take it The wind it blew torn curtains through A jagged little halls and discolored walls spoke right into my soul you may be empty you may 
may be tired, you may be broken, or grow out of style, and they may condemn you, put up signs, but you will make it, go leave your mark on time. Thank you. 